hello guys um welcome once more to another video today we are at our favorite dealer valili sports and marine minot north dakota and uh this is one of uh, the dealers that move these rocks uh, a lot of units so they always have fresh inventory uh, today we could see they had three rock stars. these are uh, 2019 units as you can see it has that little turbo diesel sticker this one is a uh, black stick shift beautiful unit five speed um, you can see it has the red oil pan underneath when we go to the side you can see underneath it has a red oil pan protector beautiful unit beautiful 2019 unit and right in front of it we have another unit this is the first time i'm seeing one of these units with uh, the rocks liner it's got the pin tool uh, hitch in the back spare tire on the tailgate and look at that rocks liner paint looks really beautiful as the uh, rear wheel well and the paint looks really really gorgeous i think i like it really beautiful just want to show a close up so you see uh, have an idea of what it looks like this is also a five speed with a few options you can see it has the optional uh, wind uh, heater system with the windshield defroster there's a switch on the left right there for the fan I believe this is a single speed you just hit that switch and you get the heat going uh, but they haven't installed the windshield yet on this unit it has the plumbing for the heater it also has a um, bluetooth sound bar installed beautiful unit you see the transmission uh, the oil pan protector skid plate five speed transmission drive shaft red differential the leaf springs beautiful unit Just look at the detail on that paint. Amazing detail. Same thing with uh, the storage compartment under the seat. It's really beautiful. And uh, this is the pièce de résistance. What really caught our attention today? It's uh, an automatic rockstar. Roxo with an automatic transmission. This is the first time I'm seeing one of these units. And going around the vehicle, what caught my eye was that first thing that caught my eye. You can see it has an additional cooler there for the transmission fluid. It sits right in front of the radiator. Nice little unit. So that's the first thing I saw. It has that additional oil cooler up front. Let's go around to the side. And on the side, you can notice it has a different sticker, turbo diesel automatic. This unit has a windshield. It's got the light bar, rear view mirrors, sound bar. It's got the door and the side steps to ease entry 
uh, it's also got the bigger tires so the ko2s and the size on this one is uh, a light truck 235 70 six by 16. so these are big these are bigger tires it also makes uh, that will make a rocks or sit higher and these are ko2s more than snow uh, there we have the red differential leaf springs nothing different from uh, the regular rocks or uh, but when we look underneath here you can see that's the transmission right there uh, from looking taking a cursory look you can see it seems to sit a little bit lower than the manual transmission hence uh, the protective plate that's a transmission right there, the automatic transmission. It's a big, big, hefty unit. Uh, I believe this one was produced barely three weeks ago. It's a fresh unit, fresh out of the factory. So up front you have the engine with its skid plate. See some of the plumbing for the automatic transmission fluid to head uh, to the little radiator up front. Have the oil filter above. And if you look carefully, you will notice there's some kind of adapter plate, uh, maybe about two inches. which sits between the transmission bell housing and the engine uh, and the engine and this is another look at the transmission and uh, just to give a little bit of detail about this transmission uh, it's a 6L50 unit made by a company in France uh, called Punch Power Glide so these transmissions are actually built in a factory that uh, used to belong to G GE, uh, GM. So GM, which is a General Motors Corporation, in 1967, here you can see the transmission type there, GM6L50, there. It's stamped on the body of uh, on the casing of the transmission on the left side. So in 1967, General Motors started this uh, this company in France. Uh, that's just to show the little plate that is between the transmission and the the transmission bell housing and the engine. So back to our story. Uh, 1967, General Motors Corporation opened up uh, this company in France in the town of uh, Strasbourg which is to the north uh, east of France just directly across from the Alsace, uh, the Alsace region of uh, Germany and what they do there is uh, they were building transmissions and uh, for many years that belonged to GM until I believe 2013 when it was sold to another company called Punch Motive International. So since 2013, that site in Strasbourg in France belongs to Punch uh, Motive International. And what they do over there is they build transmissions. That's what they do. And all the transmissions they build, they, they ship them out to OEM uh, manufacturers. So, um, this particular transmission first hit the market in 2006 and uh, from 2006 until now punch has been able to uh, punch power glide power glide has been able to build 2.2 million of them in France uh, it's used in a variety of applications uh, you have the Cadillac, CTS, ATS, STS, uh, 
versions of the transmission have been used in the Corvette, in the GM uh, Colorado, Canyon. Those trucks are in the diesel versions. They use this, uh, trans this same transmission. Uh, the transmission comes in two flavors. You have the two-wheel drive version, four-wheel drive version. And uh, they also produce a smaller, smaller version of this transmission, uh, which goes into the BMW 3 Series. So it's a well-proven transmission uh, that's well known in the automotive world. It's currently produced in three different locations. Uh, I believe in Ohio, in Sinao, Mexico, and also in Strasbourg in France. Those are the three main places where this transmission is produced. But the particular units that go on the Roxor are produced by Punch Power Glide in Strasbourg in France. Then they get imported here to the United States. So that's just a quick look inside. You see it has the two pedals. There's no clutch pedal. And I really like the console. Uh, a particular thing about this transmission that is worthy of knowing is uh, these are considered sealed units. I don't know if in the, on the Rockstar they also have a provision for checking the trans level of the transmission fluid, but they were designed to be sealed for a lifetime. And, uh, well, as many people found out, when you hit 50,000 and get into 100,000 miles, uh, their transmissions were failing and they had to devise a way of dropping the pan, changing the transmission fluid. So by no means should you consider this to be sealed for life. Okay, so another thing I want to talk about is uh, the fluid that goes into this transmission. You use the Dexron 6 and also the ZF lifeguard will work on these transmissions. Look at those beautiful cup holders. There's a button underneath. Beautiful cup holders. Space for holding your phone also when you're driving your Rockstar. So um, one other piece of information I want to give about this transmission is that it is also the ZF 6HP transmission. They are exactly the same with the sole difference that with this transmission, you have different gear sets inside. Otherwise, it's basically a ZF 6HP transmission. So uh, that's just simply amazing. Because if you consider that the ZF 6HP transmission goes into high-end cars like the BM5, BMW 5 Series, BMW 6 Series, the Aston Martin DB9, the Jaguar XK8, XKR, um, the Rolls Royce Phantom from 2003 to 2012 had a version of this transmission. The Maserati Quattroporte from 2007 to 2012, uh, the Rolls Royce Phantom Drophead Coupe from 2007 to present uses the same transmission. The Bentley Arnage from 2006 to 2009, the Aston Martin Rapide, the Bentley Brooklands, the Hyundai Ecus, and the Aston Martin Virage and Vanquish. It's just amazing that that same transmission worked its way into our humble rock star. A few things I noticed when I was underneath. You can see this drive shaft going to to the front well on uh, the automatics that drive shaft seems to be longer seems to be much longer and the drive shaft going to the transfer case going to the rear it seems to be shorter so just bear that in mind and uh, also i don't know if you might have noticed that cross member to which uh, the transmission is mounted it's also much much beefier on the automatic 
compared to the manual transmission. Uh, I found that to be very interesting. This transmission can take a lot of torque uh, from the engine or at the transmission itself. I believe going up to about 440 uh, pound foot and it would take that easily with no, with no issue. So uh, our Roxos don't really put anywhere close to that amount of torque. Um, really love uh, looking at the, these Roxor and uh, it will be interesting to find out how they integrate the transmission with uh, the computer that controls the engine of the Roxor. You see how beefy that is? Uh, that's on the automatic and uh, if you compare that with uh, the manual you see it's it's the mount is uh, not so beefy it's 6L50 looks beautiful inside it has just two stickers it doesn't have that sticker with the shift pattern which you find on the on the manuals just two stickers on the inside um, that's what it looks like beautiful console with six uh, position shifter and uh, just remember also the electronics, a bulk of the electronics controlling this transmission are actually inside the transmission itself, uh, which was revolutionary at the time. That's a manual, you can see the transmission cross member is not as nearly as beefy as for the automatic. And that's the shaft, drive shaft. I believe this is for the automatic. You can see how short it is. So I went to Valili Sport and Marine after hours and I was unable to take a look under the hood. Hopefully uh, one of these days I will be able to make it there during um, hours when they're open and take a better look underneath the hood and possibly if I get lucky, I uh, have a test drive. But so far, I'm really impressed that they were able to shoehorn this impressive transmission into a rock saw. And uh, I think that should be able to handle the weight and torque put out by the engine of the rock saw for a lifetime. It's a very good and proven transmission. These are just a few pictures showing what it looks like underneath. So that's the transmission cross member for the automatic. You can see how beefy it is. And then the drive line going up front. And you can compare that with the manual transmission cross member, less beefier. And the drive line also. All right, thanks for watching and um, hope to see you guys around on the next one.